The U.S. just announced that it turned over control of the most maneuverable F-16 in its arsenal to an artificial intelligence fighter pilot. And according to reports, it successfully flew no fewer than a dozen simulated air combat missions this past December. Let's talk about America's newest dogfighting AI. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. So I'll level with you guys. I had a whole script put together diving into all three intercepts that took place last weekend and breaking down the most likely explanations for each. But then this story came across my desk and it's just too big to put off. But if you guys are really interested in hearing my take on those intercepts, let me know and I'll try to post a slightly abbreviated version early next week. But for now, let's dive back into this AI news, because over a two-week span this past December, a heavily modified F-16D Fighting Falcon took to the skies no fewer than a dozen times with an empty cockpit and artificial intelligence at the stick. The AI fighter pilots in this aircraft came from two different efforts. The first from DARPA's Air Combat Evolution or ACE program that you probably have heard of before. And the second from the Air Force Research Laboratory's Autonomous Air Combat Operations program or AACO. With these AI algorithms at the stick, this very cool thrust vectoring F-16 flew in a variety of air combat operations, including close quarters, within visual range dogfights, and beyond visual range engagements. This successful series of tests marks a huge leap towards the advanced AI teaming that we've come to expect as a part of the next generation of fighters. With the U.S. and a number of foreign allies and competitors alike all aiming to couple their next stealth jets with scores of specially equipped drone wingmen. And while it really seems as though the Air Force just proved this concept is not only possible, but downright feasible, the truth is the implications extend way beyond that. The term drones often encompasses everything from semi-autonomous data collectors to advanced remotely piloted aircraft, and they've been around for almost as long as aircraft themselves. English inventor Dr. Archibald Lowe is often credited with fielding the world's first powered drone, an aerial target that first flew in 1917, just 14 years after the Wright brothers' first flight over Kitty Hawk. And while drones of various sorts have played a variety of roles in conflicts dating all the way back to the First World War, there's a really reasonable argument to be made that the era of drones began on July 1st of 1995 when the General Atomics MQ-1 Predator first entered operational service. In a real way, the Predator took the concept of seemingly ever-present eyes, ears, and firepower in the sky over conflict zones out of the realm of dystopian science fiction and plunged it straight into the hard-boiled reality of America's multi-theater global war on terror. Equipped for 24-hour operations inside the uncontested airspace of places like Iraq and Afghanistan, the Predator's multispectral targeting system, made up of an infrared sensor, a color and monochrome daylight TV camera, an image-intensified TV camera, a laser designator, and a laser illuminator, all provided Predator crews with all the data they need to collect valuable intel or, when called for, to deliver holy hell from on high via its two laser-guided AGM-114 Hellfire missiles. The MQ-1 Predator's success soon led to an upgraded iteration of the platform, adding 10 feet to the fuselage and 17 more to the wingspan, resulting in a new aircraft that was about the size of an A-10 Warthog. This new remotely piloted aircraft took all the capabilities that made the Predator so effective and just turned them up to 11, doubling its top speed from 120 knots to 240, doubling its service ceiling from 25,000 feet to 50,000 feet, and expanding its payload capacity from a meager 300 pounds to better than 3,000. 
While the Predator hunted with just two Hellfire missiles tucked under its wings, its replacement, dubbed the MQ-9 Reaper, can now carry eight. But for all the incredible capability these aircraft and others like them bring with them into the fight, they remain reliant on direct human interaction. Both Predators and Reapers have ground crews that directly manage takeoff and landings via line-of-sight antenna, before transferring control over to two-person crews out of Whiteman Air Force Base in Johnson County, Missouri, once they're on the prowl. These crews, made up of one licensed pilot and an enlisted sensor operator, take shifts operating their slow-moving RPAs, ensuring that there are always fresh eyes on the screens and fresh hands on the stick. This approach allows the U.S. to maintain a persistent presence over target areas, gathering intelligence or engaging targets on the ground as called upon by higher command. It also allows skilled crews to be anywhere in the world where they're needed, with Reapers and support equipment arriving in theater via cargo aircraft like C-130s and control relayed back to Missouri regardless of theater. In other words, Reaper crews could conceivably be flying over Syria on Monday, Iraq on Tuesday, and Afghanistan on Wednesday if operational requirements pressed the need. But for all the persistence, firepower, and advanced technology that these aircraft have to offer, their reliance on human operators, and the inherent lag associated with transferring data over vast distances, creates a significant limitation. In complex air combat operations, the difference between mission success and just being blown out of the sky can come down to fractions of a second. And that spells doom for RPAs like the Reaper. Back in 2021, I interviewed an MQ-9 Reaper pilot for Popular Mechanics, who we referred to in print just as Captain Dennis, for security reasons. He walked me through the aircraft's multispectral targeting system and all the different sensors that it drew its data from, and he showed me how they can be displayed on separate feeds or fused into a single high-definition display. I'll quote him here. As opposed to a multi-targeting display that's maybe six inches across by a pilot's knee in most aircraft, we have unparalleled ability to see and locate targets. But all that high-definition data comes with a pretty high price tag, called lag. Captain Dennis told me that it takes about 1.2 seconds for the Reaper's signal to reach him. Based on what he sees, he makes a decision and inputs a response, followed by another 1.2 seconds of transit time as that command is relayed back. As a result, it's not all that unusual for there to be a three or more second lag between a threat presenting itself and the Reaper actually responding to it. In a dogfight, three seconds to react is about two and a half more than you'll usually get. And while there are a number of efforts underway to offset this technical hurdle, the most promising comes in the form of artificial intelligence. In other words, in order to make drones survivable in dogfights, we have to let the drones do some of the thinking for themselves. And that brings us to the X-62A and DARPA and the Air Force Research Laboratory's AI-enabled thrust vectoring F-16 dogfighter. Which sounds sensational as I read it out loud, even though that's literally what it is. On Monday, the Defense Department revealed a series of 12 Advanced Fighter Maneuver, or Dogfighting Flight Tests, conducted between December 1st and the 16th of 2022, all in the X-62A Vista, which is a heavily modified Block 30 F-16D Fighting Falcon that was converted into something much more by Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. The X-62A offers superior aerobatic performance than any F-16 in the sky today. But the truth is, in this series of exercises, maneuverability just kind of happened to come as part of the package. What really made these dogfight exercises special wasn't the unusual aircraft flying them, but rather its two AI algorithm pilots. But that doesn't change the fact that what the Air Force really produced was a multi-access thrust vectoring F-16 piloted by a machine. The X-62A's vectoring nozzle combines with its adaptive control fly-by-wire system to allow it to mimic the flight characteristics of a wide variety of aircraft. From inside the cockpit of this fighter, it can feel like you're flying anything from a C-17 Globemaster II to the F-22 Raptor. 
But back in 2021, that Vista simulation system that made that possible was upgraded to the System for Autonomous Control of Simulations, or SACS, making it not only capable of mimicking other airframes in flight, but able to do so under the direct control of what the Air Force calls an AI agent. Over the span of those two weeks, the X-62A flew against a variety of simulated opponents in a series of one-on-one -on -one engagements, held both within and beyond visual range. The enemy fighters existed only in the digital realm, but the AI agent and its fighter flew against them as though they were just as real as any other. I'm going to quote Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Hal Heffron, who's the manager of the ACE program at DARPA. We conducted multiple sorties, takeoffs and landings, with numerous test points performed on each sortie to test the algorithms under varying starting conditions, against various simulated adversaries and with simulated weapons capabilities. It flew these dogfight exercises with each of the two AI agents on board, and incredibly, the Air Force says it was able to swap between them in just a matter of minutes, which means the same aircraft was able to fly exercises with different AI pilots on board over the span of just a few hours. I'll quote DARPA's press release this time. The flights demonstrated that AI agents can control a full-scale fighter jet and provided invaluable live flight data. In all, between these two AI agents, the Air Force racked up about 17 hours of total AI-piloted fighter operations over Edwards Air Force Base in California over the span of those 16 days. And at least one of these two AI fighter pilots is no stranger to garnering dogfight-related headlines. Back in August of 2020, DARPA held its Alpha Dogfight Trials, pitting eight teams against one another until only the most capable, guns-only AI fighter pilot remained. The Victor, an AI agent developed by Heron Systems, then took on a real human F-16 pilot in a virtual showdown, and the AI mopped the floor with its fleshy opponent, winning five times in a row without the human guy ever scoring a single hit. Heron Systems credited their victory to their AI pilot's superior nose control, making its simulated M61 Vulcan 20mm cannon just as deadly as it could possibly be. Back at the time, I got to speak with Ben Bell, Heron's senior machine learning engineer, about how important the precision provided by AI can be. I'll quote him here. It's got to keep that opponent in that one degree cone to win the game. You saw that a lot with Lockheed. We're both nose on. We're both creating damage. But when their nose is off by that one degree, that's where we were able to win a lot of these engagements. But to be clear here, it wasn't just precision that made AI such a dangerous competitor. It was also its lack of self-preservation. As Bell told me at the time, they designed their algorithm to place equal value on damaging the enemy as it placed on minimizing risk to itself. And as such, it was willing to do things that most human pilots wouldn't or shouldn't do. I'll quote him one more time. If the agent sees a 51% chance of scoring a kill as it heads into a neutral merge, it's going to take it. This really speaks to one of the real values inherent to turning over control of our most advanced fighters to artificial intelligence. Without a human operator in harm's way, the envelope of allowable risk becomes a whole lot wider. Some operations that may seem too dangerous to send a human pilot into could be seen as viable for a pilotless aircraft. And with advanced, low-observable, but very budget-conscious aircraft in development, like the Kratos XQ-58 Valkyrie, which costs just a bit more per airframe than a Tomahawk cruise missile, taking risks may not even come with a massive financial downside either. But while this is undoubtedly a huge step toward turning advanced fighter operations over to AI, there remains a significant gap between the controlled testing environments of these exercises and the complex reality of air combat. This time, I'm going to quote everyone's favorite F-35 pilot, Hazard Lee, from a conversation we had a while back, but he's got a whole video up on his channel about AI that I highly recommend you watch. It's important to realize that a BFM engagement can occur in any direction and any altitude. We'll often begin with a basic starting parameter to develop a site picture for reference, but a real engagement doesn't have those cuffs. 
The enemy always has a vote, meaning they always reserve the right to do something you're not expecting. When that occurs, you have to find a creative solution to counter the unexpected problem. Now that creative problem solving is the most powerful tool that humans bring to the cockpit. And real world limitations, like an emphasis on the preservation of expensive equipment, like let's say a highly modified thrust vectoring F-16, require a more complex approach to decision making than can usually be leveraged in a simulated environment. During the Alpha Dog flight trials, Heron's AI pilot was widely described as too aggressive by DARPA staff and Air Force pilots on hand. Under the control of Heron's AI, the virtual F-16 would practically play chicken with its opposition, something human pilots were quick to point out would be a violation of training regulations in a real simulated dogfight. Of course, in an actual dogfight, there are no such limitations, but Heron's aggression may still have been turned up just a bit too high to be realistic. In the real world, it seems, the AI agent fighter pilots weren't quite as successful as they were in the digital realm. But, as Colonel Heffron puts it, that's really to be expected. We didn't run into any major issues, but did encounter some differences compared to simulation-based results, which is to be expected when transitioning from virtual to live. Now, it's impossible to discuss AI fighter pilots running advanced fighter ops without addressing the fighter pilot-shaped elephant in the room. For decades now, we've consistently heard that fighter pilots will be a thing of the past just as soon as drones can think and act quickly enough to replace them. But even with the recent successes of these AI fighter pilot programs, that eventuality still seems a pretty long way off. In fact, getting human pilots out of the equation isn't really the long-term goal of efforts like DARPA's ACE or the Air Force Research Lab's ACO. Instead, these programs, and a number of others like them, are all about teaming artificial intelligence with real fighter pilots to create what amounts to a collaboration between the two. Programs like the Air Force's Next Generation Air Dominance, the Navy's FAXX, and a number of foreign efforts have all stated plainly that they envision the next generation of fighters as more than a single jet, but rather as a system of systems that includes a crewed fighter, but also a constellation of drones flying in support. The idea is to leave the high-level decisions up to human decision-makers and nearby fighters or even AWACS, and then using artificial intelligence to allow the drone to execute its orders without direct support. The Air Force Research Lab calls this approach autonomous aircraft teaming architecture, and it can allow a relatively small number of high-cost crewed airframes to manage a whole team of lower-cost drone wingmen, potentially even entire swarms of them, all to accomplish a variety of air combat operations through a combination of the low observable technology that dominated the latter half of the 20th century and the sort of high-volume saturation attacks that we haven't seen since since the bombing raids of World War II. This time, I'll quote the Air Force Research Lab about their Skyborg effort. Embedded within the teamed aircraft, complex algorithms and cutting-edge sensors enable the autonomy to make decisions based on established rules of engagement, set by manned teammates. But AI won't just be flying the drone wingmen. DARPA also envisions it riding right alongside human operators in the cockpit of these fighters as well. Pilots have long contended with the complexity of flying a hundred million dollars worth of state secrets through highly contested airspace, and all while keeping their minds on the mission at hand. Newer jets, like the F-35, do go a long way toward reducing that cognitive load on pilots by automating as much as possible to free up the operator's attention for the fight at hand. But in the future, AI could take this even further, managing many of the basic functions of the jet to allow the human part of the system to do what it does best, make good combat decisions. The fact of the matter is, these successful tests really will potentially have just massive implications for the future of air combat. But this shouldn't be seen as the final chapter in the book of human fighter pilot history. Instead, Maybe it's just the first chapter in a new book about collaborative air combat where humans and AI fight side by side. And on that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. 
Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.